Now that you learned about ternary expressions, I also want to show you some other specialties you will have in JavaScript when it comes to expressions and to conditional code and logical operators. And I can best show you this in the console because in our little project here, we have no real use case for the things I'm about to show you. I want to show you some nice tricks or shortcuts with logical operators. One important trick is how you can convert or coerce a truthy or falsy value to a real boolean. You do this with the double exclamation mark, also called double bang operator. Now we learned about the exclamation mark operator, which is there to negate uh, some condition or a value. And by using two exclamation marks, you basically negate the negation, which kind of reverses the negation. But there is one important thing. The exclamation mark, so the single exclamation mark already, converts a truthy value into a real false value. And if you then convert that false value back with another exclamation mark, you could get a real true value, so a real boolean. So for example, if you use double exclamation marks in front of an empty string, you will get a real false boolean instead of that falsy interpretation which JavaScript normally uses. If you use double exclamation marks in front of a one, you get a real true value. Now often it might not matter to you, but whenever you have code where you want to work with real booleans instead of let JavaScript do this truthy falsy uh, comparison or uh, coercion, then you can use the double exclamation mark to get such a value. So it's basically a type conversion trick which can convert an empty string to false or any number to true, things like that. And sometimes in code, in more advanced programs, typically you might need that, and then this is a convenient and handy approach. Another nice trick, if you wanna call it, is related to how JavaScript works with the OR operator. You can use it to assign a default value to a constant or variable. So you learned about that OR operator, of course, and as I just said, you can use it to assign a default value with this syntax here. Now what does this do? This will check some input. And now imagine that some input is another variable or constant that holds some user input and that might be empty. Now remember that empty is a falsy value, an empty string is a falsy value, is treated as false. And the way JavaScript works with the OR operator is such that it has a look at the thing in front of the OR operator, so at some input, and if that is false, it will also have a look at the value after the OR operator, because it will return true overall if at least one of the two things in front or after it is true. And of course, the thing after the OR operator here would be true, right? Max is a string which is truthy. It's not an empty string, therefore it's truthy. So this will basically yield true overall. But now that's the important thing. Unlike our logical operators like the triple equal sign or the greater or smaller operator, the or and the and operator don't generate a boolean. You can use them to combine conditions and then they will return true or false, but not because they create true or false, but because they return the results generated by the conditions they are combining. Now, if you're working with two strings, like you're doing it here with some input and max, and I'm assuming that some input also holds a string, what happens here actually is that or will return the first truthy value without converting it to a real boolean. So it will keep the original value and return that. And in our other comparisons, like this here, for example, well, that generates a real boolean, that generates a real boolean, that's why or returns a real boolean, because the things to the left and right of it generate real booleans, not because or generated a real boolean. This only just returns the first truthy or true value it's looking at. And it starts from left to right, so if this returns true, it will return this true value and not even look at the second one. If this returns false or is a false value, it will look at the second condition, and if that then returns true or is a truthy value, it will return that value, either a boolean, as it would be the case here, because this operator generates a boolean, or, as in the case of this slide here, max, 
if some input is falsy, because max will be true for you and it will therefore return max. The AND operator allows us to do something similar. Instead of using it to assign a default value, we can use the AND operator to get the last value in a combined check like here. Let's assume that is logged in here is a truthy value or a real true boolean, doesn't matter, but that it is true. In that case, and will return the last value it's looking at because and unlike or always looks at all, so at both values in front of it and after it because all need to be true or truthy. And if both are true or truthy, it will return the last value. If the first value is true, it always returns the second value or the value after the AND operator, I should say. If the first value is false, it will always return the first value. So here we would return max if is logged in is true and null or false or whichever value is stored in is logged in otherwise. Now, as I said, let's have a look at that in the console. Let's start with the double exclamation mark operator. Let's say we have some user input here and that's an empty string. We got that from some input field, but the user pressed the OK button without entering anything. That's a use case you can have in web applications. You will actually have that a lot, that users enter incorrect information. So now let's say we want to use that somewhere in our code. And in the end, in multiple places of the code, maybe I just want to know, did the user enter something valid or not? So of course we could always check for user input and this will be false because it's an empty string. So we could do something in the else block here, but maybe we want to use that is valid or not information in multiple places. So I create a new variable is valid input and that should be true or false based on user input. Then of course we could write user input and uh, use this as a condition in a ternary expression. And after the question mark, we could therefore say uh, true because if user input is truthy, then we want to store true in is valid input. Otherwise we want to store false. We could do that, but the way shorter way is to just use the double bang operator here and say this, because as you learned, this translates it to a real Boolean. So in this case, since it's an empty string and therefore falsy, this converts it to a real false value to a real false Boolean, as you see here. A single exclamation mark would also convert it to a Boolean, but of course to the opposite Boolean because a single exclamation mark negates the value. So if it's falsy, it's turned to true. If it's truthy, it's turned to false. So if we want to keep the original meaning, so a truthy value should become true and a falsy value should become false, we need two exclamation marks to not negate it, but to instead just use this as a shortcut to convert the type. Let's now have a look at default values. Let's say we want to create a username here and that's based on some user input, which of course is an empty string. We just set this up before. And if you clear here, the old values are kept. You just don't see them here anymore, but user input still is set as you see, if you want to output it like this. So now we want to create a username here based on user input. And now we either want to use the user input, but if that is falsy, so if it's empty, I want to use a default value of max. And we can do that with the double pipe symbol. So with the or operator here, because now, as you will see, we'll have max stored in there because user input is falsy. Of course, this would also work if it was a real Boolean that's false. And therefore this is used. If it would be truthy. So if we have, uh, let's say the real user input and that is menu. And then we set real user name equal to real user input or max, then real user name will actually have menu stored in it because that is a truthy value and therefore in this check or returns that first true or truthy value, which is the real user input and does not use this as a default value. So this is how you can use the or operator to assign default values to variables. Now, of course, you can also have more than one or operator here. If you had multiple variables that might or might not hold a true value, you can have value one or value two or, and then at some point, some hard coded default value, which you define probably. Now let's have a look at the double and operator. For that, let's say we have a is logged in variable, 
which is true. And based on that, we want to store some other value. Let's say we have the, the shopping cart and that's some data which we loaded from a server. And if is logged in, then we want to initialize this to be an array which already has some, some books in it, something like that. If we run this, you see now shopping cart indeed is that array with the books in it because is logged in is true. And as I said, if that's the case, then the double ampersand, so the and operator will have a look at this, then have a look at the second value. And if both are true, it will return the second one. And an array, no matter if it's empty or not, always is treated as a true value, which is why it returns that. On the other hand, if we set is logged in to false, you will see that now if you set is logged in and books, and of course we could store this in a variable or just output it like this to see what would be stored in a variable, you see that this now returns this false value that's stored in is logged in. Or if you had something here which is null, it would return null. So it basically returns the first value here. So here, for example, it would return null if we have that. So it returns the first value if that is false, the second value if both are true. Now what if the first is true and the second is false? Let's have a look at that as well. So here I set is logged in back to true, let's say. And then we check if is logged in and then something which is false, an empty string maybe, then it also returns this. So if the first value is true, it always returns the second value. If the first value is false, it always returns the first value. Now these shortcuts, these tricks might be a bit confusing also because we have no real use case for them in this project. We will see them in some places throughout the course though and you will also see them in projects you work on. Now be aware that these are always just shortcuts. What we do with them can always also achieve with the help of full if statements or with ternary expressions, but sometimes it's just shorter to use these shortcuts. That's the main idea. So if you forget to use them, in a case where you could have used them, that's not bad. You will not have an application that's way slower or worse or anything like that. These are just alternatives which can save you some code and you can always refactor your code to use them if you find a place where you can use them. But it's absolutely normal that you also sometimes overlook scenarios where you could have used one of these shortcuts. I just want to make you aware of them right now so that if we do later use them in the course, you are aware of them and also that you recognize these patterns if you see them in other code or in other examples.